to week five. Yes. Who is with me? Sarah, Mickey, Alyssa, Meredith, Jennifer, Jeannie, Claire. Hello, hello, hello. Oh my gosh. Uh, I cannot believe how fast this past few weeks have gone. OMG. I've got mom on here. <laughs> Hi, Tracy. Hi, Mar. Yay, glad you're calling in. Beautiful. Mar's calling in from Argentina this morning. Love it. I found Demar. <laughs> love it. This is so cool. This is why I love social media. How cool is it that we are all over the world. Where are you guys from, by the way? Let me know. Hola! <laughs> Hola, Mar! <laughs> me gusta! <laughs> oh my gosh, I should say, Hola, hola, hola! <laughs> you gotta say it three times, right? It's so funny. Vegas! What? Hi, Alyssa! Beautiful. I'm so happy you guys are here. Hi, Kat! Good to see you! Beautiful. Ileana's on here. I got to see Ileana's Facebook Live last night, so it's fun to get to know you guys better. So when I'm scrolling and I see you guys and you're on a Facebook Live, I'm like, what? <laughs> so I popped in and there's Ileana and she's saying hi to me and singing. I'm like, this is so much fun. This is what you guys must feel like. Like, oh my gosh, you're saying my name. Like, oh my gosh, like, I love it. Facebook Lives are so cool. Um, Tacoma, Washington, Tennessee, Portland, Maine. Oh my gosh, so pretty. Um, Alyssa, I have a task for you. You have to post a leaf picture for me and tag me because Maine is flipping beautiful in the fall, okay? Don't let me down, girl. Don't let me down. That really goes for anybody. If anybody has nice fall pictures, freaking tag me because I don't get fall here at the ocean. I don't. I love the ocean. It's beautiful. I love it so much. But I am a fall girl and I love me fall everything. The only thing that's fall here is Whole Foods Market. Whole Foods Market the is fall. in front of Whole Foods. That's it. <laughs> I did, you guys. I, I did find a fall tree yesterday. There's one outside our office. It's a small tree, but for whatever reason, there's a lot of leaves. So I did an Instagram story, but it looks like there's a whole bunch of fall. No, that is literally from the beginning to the end of the Instagram story was the only fall. <laughs> so I was so excited. Um, so yeah. Yay. So happy you were there. Colorado. Washington has got some amazing fall too, Jeannie. OMG. Like, gorge. Hi, Lise. I'm glad you're on. Okay, you guys. Uh, who is with you, Lise? Hi. Is that mom? <laughs> is that sister? Who are we? Friend? <laughs> okay. Friend. My soul friend, Laura. Oh, my goodness. Hi, Laura. Beautiful. In her defense, you can't see. Well, I can't see, back, yeah. So <laughs> I see a little tiny outline. Side by side, more we can see. We are having an extended summer, no fall yet. Bummer. Hi, Tony. Hi, Lynn. Julia, hello. Beautiful. Okay, let's go ahead and open up our space, and then we'll dive in. Closing our eyes, deep inhale, breathing in love. Deep exhale, release. Breathing in, breathing out. Right now we're aligning our energies together today for the highest of good. Whatever needs to be said, heard and cleared, let it be. Calling in love, calling in protection as we open up our space. Deep inhale, deep exhale. You can open up your eyes. Hello, week five. So let me tell you what happens around week five. Um, you know, there's a lot of energy. Week one, it's like 
oh my gosh, this is like week one of our workout program. I work out every day. I do my ab routine. I do my, my cardio. I'm on fire. I do my, my water, my snacks. I cook everything. I meal prep at night. I'm good. I'm up at five, right? Two, still here. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm doing it, but I'm like, you know, I, I missed my snacks this week. And then weeks three and four nothing gets done, right? Like no workout routines, maybe once a week, you're starting to feel really guilty, and so you go into hiding, <laughs> okay? It's like hiding. Like nobody saw me at the gym those weeks, right? Like, oh my gosh. So what I encourage us this week is um, to kind of break through some stuck energy. And I'm gonna, you know, tell you a little bit of a hope statement right now. Weeks five and six are the best, okay? <laughs> so if you're feeling behind, don't worry, okay? If you're just joining us, who cares? The replays will be up. Go back to them. They are informational, they are fun, they are cool. Definitely go back. But weeks five and six, it's time. It's time to pick up the pace, it's time to really dive in, and it's the best weeks anyway, so who cares? Who cares how many things you missed? Who cares if you're feeling behind? Who cares, okay? I know, <laughs> I'm not grading you. This is a free course. <laughs> it's not like you're graduating something or anything like that, right? They're gonna be out here forever. So um, I just wanted to kind of do that because I've gotten some emails um, from some people that have um, been mentioning that they've been feeling this way. And so I wanted to kind of just share that. Um, Tracy is on here. So that's my mom, my better half, my business partner, my best friend. Um, she's my soul friend too. <laughs> she's my soul everything. Um, <laughs> she's on here and she is our amazing healer. So I'm the manifester of the team. She's the healer of the team. We both do both, but you know, we got to like have a niche. So um, she's amazing. She is the healer of healers, the clear of clear. She's just amazing. Um, she's on here offering some clearing support. So um, you can send her a private message. She's the one that says Tracy. Um, she will clear everyone on the call. If you just want... Blown up my phone. Oh, you are. Okay, cool. You guys already are. I don't get to see those messages. Those are private. So, you know, you can talk about me too. Um, <laughs> you're up below. That's my mom. So uh, she's got my back. Uh, but yeah, you can um, go ahead and message her with anything. She'll talk back and forth. So. Things come up. They do. Like when you're ready they do. For movement, it's amazing yeah. how like, sometimes it, you just yeah. go there. They do. So um, do you guys notice I'm in the office today? Right? The loft is not in the background. I am at the office. I did a little Facebook Live. I think most of you were on there. So if you didn't, I did a little Facebook Live. You can catch up. But it is action week, right? Action, week five, action. And this is the most exciting part of manifesting. So we had a three-day weekend. Anyone feeling like they fell off track? <laughs> yeah, it's okay. What well, happens if you're in holiday weekends, okay? That's what they're for, it's okay. We can relax, we can have fun, and then we get back on. So my three-day weekend, I didn't really relax. Um, because I thought I was going to. So I wake up in the morning and this is Monday, right? So the, the, the bank holiday, um, we wake up in the morning and I was like, okay, I'm going to go have some coffee with mom. Let's go over our calendar. Let's get organized for the month. And then I'm going to come back home and do my thing. Hey, Diana, uh, Ashley's on here too. Hi. So, um, I roll out of bed. I don't put a bra on because why? <laughs> I'm just gonna like come right back. I mean, I literally rolled out of bed, okay? Like hair just kind of just tie, you know, I, I got shoes on, so that was winning, and then I left. And um, I grabbed coffee, I'm, I'm hanging out with mom, and I all of a sudden start to feel like, huh, we should go visit the office. So, side story to the office. We live in a beautiful beach town right? It's the ocean, Pebble Beach, Carmel, that area, right? And the thing about the summertime is everybody comes here. And that is great. I love tourists, right? They really do help our town so much. But what happens is traffic. 
<laughs> and no parking. And it's like a complete shit show. And so we moved the office out of the office this summer into our homes. We were working from home. And um, so we weren't even sure. We're like, you know, are we going to give up the office? Are we going to turn it into an event space? It was like all this stuff. It was just kind of sitting here. So we, um, we, you know, just started talking about it and it just started to feel really good. And I was like, you know what? I think it's time for a new fall routine. Let's just, let's just do it. And so, yes, me in all my glory with no bra, really just shoes and sweats and my hair up, we decided to have an impromptu moving day. Yay! Which I think is the best because then you don't have to prepare and you don't have the mind chatter of like, oh my gosh, how am I going to do this? Right? We just moved. And it only took a couple hours. I was sweating like a hog because it was freaking like a heat wave here. And you know what? The next morning I woke up, I got ready. I got my glasses on, got my little scarf on, got my shoes on. It was like, got my coffee. I was a new woman, new woman, a night and day. I, I go to the office and I'm like, fall, fall schedule, fall routine. This feels amazing. It's funny how different feelings, right, we have. We can feel seasons, right, am I right? They have feelings. We can feel routines. We can feel nostalgia, right? We can feel memories. I mean, we feel a lot of shit, right? We feel lots of emotions. We feel lots of people, right? We, like if there's someone that stands but behind me at Starbucks and I can just feel them, like, you know, why don't you go ahead? Ugh, right? <laughs> why don't you get your coffee first? Like, I don't want to feel you or your energy breathing on my neck. Like, I'd rather wait an extra like 1.5 minutes like go ahead <laughs> you know like we just feel a lot and the other thing is we respond to our environment we do we respond to our environment and environments change like the seasons right the loft was feeling really, really good. I love the loft. It's beautiful. It's my home. I love it. But it also feels really good now to change it up. This week, I thought it was so appropriate because I kind of have the energy of whatever I teach the week or month, you know, prior. So I started moving, right? And then I was like, of course. Wait, what's week five? action okay it's a literal movement right this is so cool i i love this no matter what course we teach whatever it is um if we have a year-long course mom and i will experience the next month's topic a month early and if it's like a week course we experience it a week early right so i'm really excited because that way we have you know relevant stories to share <laughs> probably <laughs> you know so we have fun it's like oh yeah I have a story to share. We always go through it. We always do. We don't just and, teach it. Yeah. We, we actually. We really do. We, we go, go through it. it. So this week um, is all about action. And this is the part in manifesting that's taught out there where I get, <clears throat> it's like my pet peeve. Because we're taught to ask, believe, and receive, right? But what happens when you feel everything, right? I, I feel like the rules change a little bit when we're sensitive to things. Because here's what happens. What, what we're really taught, right? Let's just look behind the fancy manifesting words. What we're really taught is to ask for something and then wait for it to happen. But wait with faith, right? But then when you wait with faith, you're, you're expecting. And then, you know, it just doesn't show up. You don't have a time. You don't, it, it's just like panic starts in. Right? So I use the example. Imagine this. Imagine if I walk up to you and I'm like, hi, hi, Alyssa. Hey, can you hold my bag? I'll be right back. Right? And you're like, what? hi, Kayla. Like, oh, yeah, I'll hold your bag. You're like, okay. <laughs> you're holding my bag. And, you know, like the first five minutes, it's like, wow, like, that's weird. She's like, where is she? Right? Like an hour later, the fuck? Like, I was excited to see her, but now I'm like really upset because that's rude. 
right? And now, like, I don't want to put her bag down. Maybe, like, is there something? Maybe I should, no, I can't look in her bag, right? You know, it's all these things, right? And then, like, after a couple hours, you're going to be angry, angry with me. And you're going to be like, what the actual F? And then you're going to be like, you know what? F this bag, right? And you're just going to, like, ditch it or take it with you. Or eventually, you're going to leave. Eventually, you're going to give up. Why? Because when we wait for something with expectation, the longer we wait without a sense of time, we panic, we doubt, and we get angry. It's just what happens. The missing part in manifesting, hi Sherry, you have done. The missing part in manifesting, it's kind of not always talked about, is action steps. And here's where I think we, it gets lost in translation. Let's just clarify some things. Okay. I believe in magic, okay? I really do. It is the only thing that makes my life make sense, okay? There's a lot of stuff that happens in my life that I just cannot make sense of. The only logical explanation is magic, okay? Like, magic is real. Magic happens in manifesting, yes. I'm not saying don't believe in magic, okay? It absolutely happens. But the magic part that happens will find you in motion of your action, okay? So let me take you back in time um, a, a little bit in my life. Back to New York City, Kayla. Yes! For those of you that don't know, I lived in New York City for like seven years. That was my stomping grounds. Freaking loved New York City. Never thought I was gonna leave. And now I live in a loft in the forest by the ocean, okay? So literally crazy things happen every day. Never say never, okay? Um, back in New York City to the, to the actual moment when I had chose, or I had ch chosen to leave and come here. And I'm sitting in my apartment with all my furniture because I've lived there seven years, you know? And it's like, okay, scary moment of, okay, am I going to just delete my life and <laughs> start over? Am I going to set fire to my apartment? Because that's easier than, you know, trying to coordinate selling my furniture, moving my furniture, you know, all, all that stuff. It was just a lot of action stuff that I, that I, that I had to do. Um, I decided to move my life. Mom was there with me because she had, you know, moved in for a while. And then we, we both decided to come back to California. And so we had all these moving pieces, right? Um, I was also launching like five courses at the same time. It was like insane. Like sometimes I go like, I must be crazy. I think I am. Like, I, I, but that's okay. You guys like the crazy. So it's good. It, it works for, for manifesting. But I remember I was so excited and it was like, I finally did everything that I wanted, you know, to, to, to do. Everything was being shipped to California. I sold all the other furniture, like everything was beautiful and I get on the on, on the plane I buckle my seatbelt and I sit there and all of a sudden it was like tears tears and mom's like are you okay like this is what you wanted like you asked for this like you're okay right do you need to get off the plane is this all a mistake you know and I'm sitting there and I'm like no I'm not upset I'm not sad I'm happy, <laughs> you know, have you ever had those moments where you're just like, I'm just feeling too much at once, I don't know what I feel, and I had this moment where I realized I'm saying goodbye to such a beautiful time in my life, like sometimes we move on from things, not because it's bad, but because it's just time for something new. Like it would be great if New York did something terrible to me and I could be like, F you, I'm out, right? That's just how it happened. It was like one of those breakups where you go, you know what, I love you, you love me. We both are just growing apart. We both need different things. You know, it's like one of those breakups, you know, where it's like you almost wish something bad happened, you know, so you could be like, eh, you know, it was just this beautiful breakup. And the thing is, I'm stepping into a new, 
a, a new chapter. I mean, this was like a new book, right? That's not even a, a, a new chapter. We're going into the, the sequel. What happens here is even when you get everything that you want and things are happening smoothly and it's going well, I'm telling you, you will still try to push away everything good in your life. You will still doubt. You will still have moments of, oh, what am I doing? But let me tell you the other side of this. That's a sign of growth. That's a sign of actually evolving. That's a sign of one of my favorite words, up leveling. So it's okay to feel these things. And I'm telling you, you will feel these things taking action. There's a reason why there's a hesitation before movement. Because as a sensitive, guess what? You can feel the future. See, I believe in magic. I do. And you should too, because you feel the future. You just sometimes don't know how to articulate it and you don't know how to, you know, express it. I'm one of those people where I have a very strong reaction that doesn't make sense in the moment and then makes sense three months later with that person <laughs> or that thing, you know, I'm like, I don't know why I'm so angry with you. And it's like over a muffin, you know, and it's like, really, Kayla? Like why? And so I always go, I'm crazy. I'm sorry. And then three months later, you know, it's like, oh, you date my boyfriend? Like, now I, now I understand why I was so upset about the muffin, right? Like, I just didn't understand why, right? Like, there's always a reason why. So for us, when we kind of step up to take action, we sometimes feel down the path. And that's why we get a lot of hesitation to take that step, because let's be real we're human right like we're gonna have some fear but like why do i have the resistance to writing a check why do i have the resistance to saying yes why do i have the resistance like it feels like so much resistance for us right like what seems easy for someone else it's like <sighs> right in that moment it's like the walls are coming in and it's just i can't breathe and like what's happening and like i don't think i'm like a super anxious person but when i step up to my action step, I am. I'm like manic. I'm all of a sudden having a panic attack. Like what's happening? Action steps will bring out just a little flare of your crazy. And that's good because that grows us. But I wanna tell you this because I think when we are taught to, you know, just ask and then wait and be patient and we're not feeling those things, we give up because we feel crazy and you know we look at everyone else and it's like, oh, well, they're waiting patiently. Like, why am I flipping out? You are not crazy. There's nothing wrong with you. And guess what? We experience multiple layers of resistance and blocks, okay? So there is <clears throat> internal resistance. Okay, this is where let's just say I'm gonna start a workout routine, okay? And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna wake up at five and it's like five o'clock in the morning, right? And you're looking at the clock going, maybe I could work out in the evening, right? <laughs> like, I just wanna like, ah, oh, I'm really tired. I, I don't know, I think I'm actually nauseous. I think I might be coming down with something. You know, I really need my rest. <laughs> <laughs> snooze, right? I really need my rest because I think I'm, I'm, I'm definitely sick. Okay. And then the evening comes, right? And it's like, oh, but the Ladies of London just started. I can't miss the premiere of Ladies of London. That's my favorite show. Like, ah, oh. well, you know, that's only one day a week. So you know what? If I go to sleep right after this show and wake up at 5 a.m. tomorrow, then I can get two workouts in tomorrow and it'll totally make up for this day so i'm just gonna you know right right come on there is internal resistance now this resistance is where we have to say you just do it 
this is the one you push through, okay? This is the one where you go, you wake up at five and you're like, right? Dang it. Yeah. But I am making a commitment to myself. There's an intention, right? I like to think of intentions as little promises, right? There's a little promise that you've set with yourself and you're not gonna let yourself down. That's the energy you push through, okay? There is also external resistance, yes? Okay, so let's say for example, um, let's use mom. Hi mom, hi. Let's say, so this is a total fake situation because mom's always happy for me. But let's say I go to mom and I say, you know what? I am doing this, this free course and I'm manifesting for the first time and I am gonna manifest abundance. So I'm super excited. I'm gonna like bring in more money into my life. I'm gonna, you know, do all this stuff. And you know, I'd really appreciate it if you could start talking high vibe around me because I just can't have any toxic people in my life. <laughs> I can tell you right now what I would do. Right. <laughs> What would it you would, do? It would be a finger. <laughs> like, it would oh. be a finger that would happen. Right. So not everyone is going to be <laughs> as excited for you as you are. Okay. And you can expect that. So let's just say, like, you know, all of a sudden she goes, like, what's something you could say? You know what? You've never had abundance. Or like, say, say something really hurtful to me. Right. Don't, don't actually say it right now. I'm, I'm very vulnerable right now. I'm manifesting. <laughs> <laughs> but like hearing something hurtful and then you go down, right? External. Maybe your routines need to change or something going on, like external resistance. Like why all of a sudden does everyone not want me to do well? Right? Like, ah. so in that instance, we have to push through some external resistance, but that's gonna look a little different, right? That means you gotta be a little selfish with your time and your energy. That means you gotta be a little mindful with who you're sharing with, because even your best friends sometimes that say, yeah, I can't wait for us to have love, will go, how can you get love first, right? And it's not always bad. It doesn't always mean toxic people. It just means human nature right? A lot of triggers come out in humans and it's normal. And the thing is, as sensitives, what we do is we absorb this as judgment. Okay. So external now becomes internal judgment. And when we hit internal judgment, a few things happen. First of all, um, did you guys know this? Your bodies will start to bloat. And it will feel like you've gained five to 10 pounds of fat because it doesn't actually look like bloating. It looks like weight, <laughs> okay? And uh, we will start to expand. We call this expansion. Um, you will start to feel very depressed. Every thought will be doubtful. Um, you start to almost just kind of hibernate a little bit. So in the energy world, we call this clusters, okay? It's an actual thing. It's triggered energy that gets stored inside and you can't really get rid of it unless you get some energy clearing, right? And so we, we do a lot of cluster clearing. That's what we do in our society membership because it's so, you know, uh, common. Um, or we hop on here to kind of say like, hey, I'm feeling that, but the symptoms are, if you really start to feel depressed, chances are that's just some energy, right? So you always kind of want to have the energy side when you are manifesting. The other thing is we have energy blocks, okay? And mind blocks, right? So this is, let's say I grew up um, always uh, feeling like I was never going to be able to have nice things. And I have to work really hard to have nice things. And then I want to later in life start my own business. And then I'm working like 30 hour days and there, there aren't even 30 hours in a day, right? It's just like 
so much work. Why are you working like that hard? Well, because I have to work hard in order to make money and I want to make a lot of money. So I got to work a, a lot of hard, right? This is what we call like a mind block, right? Or like an energy block. Sometimes it's actually stored in your energy, but a lot of times it's just your mind. This is your story, right? If you've heard these terms, sometimes you'll have a money story, right? Or you'll have um, a manifesting block or so something like this. This can actually be worked through in your mind, okay? You can do this through journaling, through thoughts, through a mindset shift. And this is what I really focus on. So mom is like the body healer, okay? She can actually, like she healed cancer one time in a dog. Like she's legit, right? Like there's some stuff that she does that is like amazing. I am also a healer, right? I am the mind healer, okay? Anyone remember Chris Angel? Mind freak, right? That's me, okay? If I could come down on a hanging rope, I would. Like, right? Like, lights, magic, that's me, okay? Mind freak, yes, okay? The mind healer. Now, the really cool thing about being a mind healer is, um, you know, it's actually you that heals your mind. You have this. But sometimes we just, when we're in it, right, we can't see it. You ever notice that? So this happened with me last year in the office. So prior to having the office, um, mom and I were sharing a home and we had, you know, dogs and, you know, people in and out, right? It was just like a lot. And we're trying to run a business. So what we did is we moved the office to the living room and then that was too much. So we moved it to a smaller room and then it was too cramped. We moved it over here. Then we split the office into two areas, right? And it just never worked, <laughs> right? And then we had like lawn people there two to three days a week with leaf blowers and like, we live in the forest. There aren't even leaves. Like, what are you mowing, right? It's pine needles. Like, it was like so frustrating. So we were trying to wake up at like 3 a.m. to record podcasts. We were trying to do energy work. And we always go to the ocean. It was just like nuts, right? And then like the neighbors, like I, I remember waking up at 3 a.m. one time and I'm like pissed, right? But I'm like, hey, I got to get high vibe for this podcast, right? And then I wake up at 3 a.m. and then the neighbors are like rearranging furniture at 3 a.m. up above us. I'm like, are you kidding me? Holy resistance, right? That is external that resistance, by the way. And I was like so upset. So I'm getting like really upset, really peaked. And then I hear this, right? I ask for like, what's my block, right? And I hear this noise, like noise, what? And like, duh right? Like, hello, noise. Like, anyone would have known that. I've been complaining about it, you know? Noise. Okay. How can I work through that? So mom and I were going back and forth. I'm like, okay, what do we do? What do we do? And then I was just like, after like a few options that were clearly crazy, we finally stumbled upon, oh, maybe we can rent an office. But here's the thing. Last year, it was like, rent an office. That's that's scary. Luxurious. That's yeah, too that's luxurious. luxurious. Yeah. That is like too much. That is like, whoa, that is real deal. Are we ready for that? Right. You see, in, man man in manifesting all the thoughts come forward, all the doubts come forward, because when you up level, this is a natural process. So we're like, you know what? Let's just look. Let's just look. Manifesting an office and then paying for an office are two different right? things. Yeah. Dreaming of an because, office is awesome. Yeah. In, the, in your mind, in an office is nice, but then to actually sign a lease for two to three years with a set amount is different, right? And um, I'll never forget finding this office online, and I was like, oh my god, that's the one, right? And cute little town of Pacific Grove where we live in, right? It is like the, the penthouse suite office, right? I'm used to like, I'm a penthouse suite. I'm used to New York City, right? And I come here and I'm like, oh, got it. So floor three, <laughs> not floor like 333, right? Okay, okay, floor three, cute, okay. It's got a kitchen and its own bathrooms, so that's cool. You guys have seen the office, it's beautiful, right? And it was one of those things where I remember looking at mom going, are we ready for this? This is a big deal. 
like Gotta get Wi-Fi here too. You know? Yes. All of a sudden, like all the bills started doubling. Yeah. Right. And here's the thing: it was beautiful. We did it in spite of the fear. And you know what? The noise went away. And you know what happened immediately after getting the office? We got two homes. <laughs> We got the loft that I live in now. And it was just one of those things where, you know, it's a scary thing that helps you up level, but it's one of those things where you really do invest in something and you get something back, right? We invest heavily in this business. We invest heavily in our clients and we invest in school software and all this stuff because we really want it to be a really up leveled experience for people, you know? Um, but it's also one of those things where it really does affect our personal lives as well. It, it does start to come back, not immediately, but it does. And it feels so good. Um, I'm saying that because, you know, action steps, they do kind of uh, start from blocks. That's a beautiful place to start. And that's why I always say it's equally as important to know what you don't want as it is to know what you do. And when things are going wrong, don't place judgment on it because when you are manifesting and things go wrong, that is good information. That is like on the map, start here, okay? That's the X that you get. Like it's overwhelming, even at the mall, those maps, right? I'm like, where's Aldo? Like, you know, I'm trying to find the shoe store. Like, where am I, right? And then there's this big X that says, you are here, right? It's like, okay, that's your manifesting map. You are here. And where do you want to go? Start with what isn't working. Noise. Okay. So, but we take the information and don't go judgment. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I picked a place that has like yard work three days a week. I'm an idiot, right? Like, you can't go down that route, right? Because it's very easy to do that. You go down into like, okay, noise. How can I strategize noise? And this is where the manifesting comes in. Because strategy. this is actually where, yes, thank you. Strategy. This is where you get the information, okay? This is where you don't wait anymore. It's like, okay, I got a problem. I got 99 problems. Well, let's start with the one that's bothering me the most today, okay? Let's take a look at this problem. And then, that's when you start to dream. You dream with your problem. How can I move through this? Right? Because we have long-term goals, which is what we talked about. Then we have phases, right? The phases, phase one is the action steps. And I'll tell you what, the most important thing that you have to remember, if there's just, you, you just walk away from this course with two words, <laughs> feel good. You have to feel good. Your choices have to feel good. The problems won't feel good, but the solutions will, right? The action steps, like taking action never feels good. Like, you know, calling somebody up to go on a date doesn't feel good, but then the date feels good after about an hour, right? <laughs> you get comfortable. Like, you know, you just gotta break through the energy first. So start here. The next thing I wanna talk about today is when you have your action steps, um, you want to try to keep momentum, okay? Kind of like the gym, right? I love how I'm using this example. So the, the gym, when you're in a routine and you're going and you're in flow, it feels good, right? You're like, it's just part of what you do. But then if you take a week off, dang, how hard is it to get back? It's like, oh my God, right? It takes like a month, sometimes a year, if you're like me, to get back on track for that one week. Like, oh my gosh, like what's wrong with me? I'm broken, right? Judgment, right? Run the judgment spit. So we do want to keep momentum because manifesting magic, right? This is the magic part. It starts to grow, okay? So here's where magic happens in action. Okay. When I moved here to California the first time, we didn't have a home right away. And so we're staying at grandma's house 
teaching energy at religious grandma's house, right? It was so fun. It was so cool. And uh, we, we survived and we did it, right? We did it. You just got to do what you got to do. We didn't have a car. We made so and many things work. We did. Impossible. Oh like, my God. I felt like that show, you have an impossible you have, situation. <laughs> it was. It work. It was Project Runway. Yeah. Like, you have an impossible situation, make it work. Tim Gunn, okay? We had Tim Gunn as our person, and it was like, you have a course, go. Two days, go, right? It was just like, ah! We didn't have, all, I didn't even know that my grandmother had, like, dial-up internet. I didn't know that that was still a thing at 2015. Like, what? Like, literally, it almost made the AIM noise. I was like, what? Grandma, what's going on? And then, of course, I tell her we need to get you all set up with DSL, high speed, all this stuff. And she's like, I need to think about it. And I'm like, great. So I need to come up with another solution. So I didn't have a car. So mom and I went to Target and bought bikes. And we would ride our bikes to Starbucks to upload all our videos and use their Wi-Fi. Now, the really cool thing about Starbucks is they have strong internet, but not what we need. So we would have to sit there for five to six hours at a time waiting for these uploads that we did every day, right? And you know what? That's where I tell you that action step got me here. But guess what got me here? Paying $800 a month in internet at three different locations, right? It's like insane. But I needed that in order to feel really good about paying it here because, um, you know, there, it wouldn't have felt good to pay that much then. I'd be like, what? That's a car, right? You, sometimes you have priorities first, right? We eventually got, you know, car, you know, all that stuff situated. But I'm telling you, like, it's not always glamorous when you're manifesting. But when you have the vision and the drive and the dream, it feels good along the journey. Mom and I reflect back at, at that time and we're like, do you remember we used to do that? Like there's so much gratitude and there's such a feeling of fulfillment and success inside of you when you go back to those times. I recently, um, you guys know I, I took my trip to, to grandma's house and I actually um, stood in that same Starbucks and I texted mom, I was like, I'm at the Starbucks, like the one that thought we were drug dealers because we just sit outside for six hours a day, you know, and it was just so surreal because you know, it's funny that Starbucks was way smaller than I remember, you know, it's just like so surreal and it's a proud moment ordering a, a cup of coffee and you know, it's just like, I cannot forget how far I've come. You know, like you really can't. And that's why in the manifesting, like, you know, last year's fears are so small, but now this year's fears are like, oh my God, right? But I have last year's fears and overcoming it to give me confidence for this year's fears and so forth and so forth. You see, it's a process. And this is why manifesting is a lifestyle, right? It's not just a period of time. We are always manifesting whether we like it or not right? We just manifest in the wrong direction, <laughs> typically. And we're like, crap, okay? There's certain times where we do focus and we get really focused on what is next, right? Like, of course, okay, now I'm going to really focus. But we're always manifesting and uh, growing. I needed to hear this. Makes me feel like the annoying things I've got to do are not in vain. You become a stronger person. Oh my gosh, you should have seen us the year before that one um, in New York City because they don't have air conditioning there. You have like an, an air conditioning unit in your window, but you can't record podcasts with that on because it's like, right? And so we turn off the AC and then, I don't know if you guys have been to New York City in the summertime, it's hot. So we would literally be sitting there in like just a bra, and like shorts rolled up, and like we were sharing a, a, a computer and a one desk, computer. one computer, and we had like the, the microphone, and we would try to film like I five in a row. Echo, remember we have a blanket. We'd have a blanket, office, yes. And the microphone, and sweating, and yep. trying to keep the noise, and the oh, and we would just be drenched. Yep, and you know sweating, we sorry. kept doing it, and you. Like the podcast was amazing. And that was, we got so much feedback from the podcast. It was like, oh my God, this is so, and we, so we kept doing it. And it was like, okay, going under, like sweating, you know, it was just like deodorant everywhere. Like, okay, let's do this, right? And like now we have the office and we have like a podcast station. It's like, that's so cool, right? 
But we also, I think sometimes that's when we expect, and I'll be real, I had some expectations when I started my business. Manifesting in the middle. Uh, man, I was like, oh, it'd be so great. I'll start my own business. And then, like, I'm having so many clients and, you know, I'll have all this stuff. Like, no. It was a slow slither to a crawl to a walk and tumble to a walking to, like, I'm still learning how to walk, I feel. You know, like, I've just got so far that, you know, I, I, I want to go to the top. You know, I just want to keep going. So I'll probably always be walking. I'll always be learning how to walk. Um, so yeah. Anyways, um, the the momentum is really key here because it is like you're you're gonna have moments like that. I remember like being on my bike, you know, strapping up my snacks for the day on my backpack because it's gonna be there for six hours. I was going to work. You know, it's just like, where's your location, Starbucks? Um, and you know, we, we they have, have that. Great they have great Wi Fi. Yeah, great. The best in town. We tried a couple locations, right? The best in town. Although you do have to expect to wait six hours. <laughs> so we did it. You know, it's just when you are in alignment with your desire, this really cool thing happens where nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. You have blinders on. It's just make it work. Tim Gunn, Project Runway. Oh, you have an impossible situation? No problem. I will find a solution. And that's where I think sometimes we, we get caught up because when we hit resistance, it's like, this is what I hear a lot. Oh, the universe is just telling me that, that this isn't right. The universe is telling me like that this is just, it's a sign. It's not meant to be. Okay. The universe is not telling you it's not meant to be. Like, do, do you think if I heard my grandmother tell me that she wanted to wait a couple of weeks to figure out Wi-Fi, that the universe was telling me that I wasn't meant to, to do what I'm here doing? No. My grandmother is a sensitive and cannot make up her mind and takes several weeks to make any kind of decision. So yeah, that's just grandma, right? That's not the universe speaking through grandma. It's just grandma. And she will never change. <laughs> so I can expect that hurdle anytime I need her for something, right? It's okay. However, there's a shift that happens, okay? So I don't know if you guys were around during this time, but um, I think a lot of you are new, but some of you were here. Who remembers uh, two, fall 2015 periscopes at 10 a.m. in the morning? Anyone on here from my Periscope days? I remember all of this, says Claire. Yes, Claire was there. Um, Meredith was there. I think Sarah was there. Um, Jeannie was there. Yes, Mar was there. Okay, okay. So this is when Periscope was, it was an app. It was before Facebook Live. And um, it was really cool then. It's like creepy now, and there's a lot of like creeps on there, so I don't need to go on Periscope. But um, it was really cool. It was the first time I was able to kind of show up and talk to myself on the screen with hoping that other people on the other side were listening, right? <laughs> and so it was fun. I did it every morning. And um, that was at grandma's house. And I, you know, I couldn't talk about these things in front of grandma. And I couldn't let that stop my growth. So what did I do? You guys remember Periscope at the park? <laughs> I would go to the little neighborhood park. I'd walk in the morning, it was cold as balls. And I had like layers, I had hot tea because I knew it was gonna be there for at least a half an hour. You could like literally see like the fog of my breath. Like it did not matter where I was, I had to show up. Now I have a beautiful office, home, wherever that I can just, you know, hop on at my, my own, you know, whenever I want to, whenever it feels good. But I didn't have that at the beginning. But I still showed up. I still did it. I still created that. I remember one Periscope that was raining. I sat in the rain and showed up and did meditation. I remember that too. And I remember it did not matter because the energy and the connection that we had was so beautiful and it was in alignment. You see, that energy created what I'm now living in now. And what I'm doing now is creating what I'm going to be experiencing later 
And that's where you cannot let your external world dictate how you feel. It will always impact, but it doesn't have to dictate. It doesn't matter that grandma can't understand words like energy and manifesting, right? It's okay. Go outside. It's okay. You know what's so funny? No one else realized why I was doing that. They're like, oh, we're going on a walk with Kayla. Cool. Like, she really likes the park. <laughs> okay. All right. I remember this one time on this Periscope, um, I had people waiting for me. So um, I would go at the same place, same time every day. And I walked out and I noticed this, this group of people. And I'm like, oh, that's odd. Okay, well, this is my spot. I'm still going to do that. Meredith was there, right? And I was sitting there and all of a sudden, this group of people start making fun of me on my Facebook Live or on, on my Periscope. They're making fun of me and they were taunting me and they're like, you know, saying all these really terrible things on live and I'm live with you guys, right? And I'm like, how do I handle this professionally? Okay. And so, cause like normal me would have been like, fuck you, right? <laughs> but like, I'm like in front of people and I'm like, okay, you know what I did? I closed it down, said, all right, I'll be right back, you guys. I looked up at them and I'm like, I forget what I said. I probably said something kind of sweet and mean <laughs> at the same time. I got in the car. I went to another park. I popped back on and I finished Periscope. I didn't take it as, oh my gosh, the universe is telling me that this is like wrong or, you know, bad. You're going to have to push through resistance. You know, it's funny. That was such a beautiful example for people to see me through. People actually contacted me after and was like, oh my God, like, I don't know what I would have done in that situation. I'm like, wow, you really are who you say you are, things, right? And it was just like, well, yeah, but I forget, like people need to see those moments. And it grew me. Sarah, yeah, Sarah was there, I remember that day, it grew me. And it also showed me that no matter what hate I get, I'm still gonna shine. And you know what? that hate, I get it all the time. I like pop on. I have people telling me, I would never learn manifesting from somebody that looks like you. I'm like, then get off my page. <laughs> like, then bite. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I like black or I like, who cares? I'm not going to be in a box of what I need to be. I'm going to feel good. And if you don't like it, get off my black rainbow. You know, who cares? Get off. Holy judgment. But that's the thing. You're going to get that all the time. And the meaning behind it isn't anything other than what are you going to do in spite of it? Are you going to rise up or are you going to go down? I love, I love that. Get off my black rainbow. I still have a rainbow personality, right? It's just black. <laughs> There's glitter on it. Come on. Black glitter is beautiful. <laughs> I always say my personality has plenty of color to it, but it can handle my black wardrobe. Okay. I got a very colorful personality, right? It's okay. Can you imagine me if I wore all this tie dye? That would be way too much. Are you kidding me? <laughs> like you, guys, you guys would be like, whoa, right? Whoa, too much personality. Shades of gray, right? Yeah. That's so funny. All the way to white, right? I feel like I have lead color. I have black. There's several shades of black, by the way gray, several shades of gray, cream, stark white. I'm introducing blue, right? I mean, the other day I wore blue. It's like so nice. Anyways, I love color. I just, I like it on other people. I actually do love color. Uh, love the neutrals, right? Yeah, I'm just, you know, gotta do what you gotta do. Anyways, but you have to keep going. And that's the thing. Like what I, I want to tell you is that expect blocks. If you're going to expect something, expect resistance. Okay. Expect resistance because it will be there. And guess what? If it's not there, you're not in alignment. What did she just say? Alignment means you'll get resistance. Yes. Because you are growing any up level that you get. Why does it feel good on the next level? Because you overcame something, 
right? Why does the office feel so good? Because I'm not on my bike. Because <laughs> I'm not at Starbucks waiting for six hours for what takes me two minutes now. But I love that version of me. I go back to those periscopes, I'm like, there's such a magic there. Right, that those are actually in the society membership. I have all those replays up, so if you haven't looked at them, go back to the first ones. You'll see me walking with my little cup and my blanket. <laughs> yes. Um, you're never gonna find a four leaf clover if you don't get a little dirt on your hands, right? Exactly, and Lee's would know. So Lee's on here has all the four leaf clovers in the world that she finds. She's the lucky four leaf clover girl. And every time I see a four leaf clover, I see Lee's face. <laughs> I love it. And then I remember her comment about where's the pot of gold. <laughs> so funny. And five leaf, right? Yes. Now, there is this really cool thing too, where the magic does come in. Okay, so it's not all pushing effort, you know, like there is a part where the magic comes in. So here's where um, I was calling up to find a home where we are now. And I find the perfect apartment. I was like, this is the perfect transition home. I'm so excited. I call them up because I'm like, I finally found it, right? Answer, like, like I saw a colorful rainbow that day. It was like, yes, the answer, right? get on the phone, call, and the person says, oh, sweetie, there's a two-year wait list for that. And, you know, it's kind of pointless. Like, you could put your name on there, but if this is your transition home, like, you probably, you probably just shouldn't, you know? And I'm like, oh. but I felt it. But I felt my rainbow. Like, what is, she, what is this woman telling me? This is, I want another woman. So I called again. <laughs> Got a different person, same answer. Like, okay. All right, so mom and I took a vacation. This was on my birthday. Took a vacation to Carmel, and I was like, you know what? Let's just go there. And so we walked into the leasing office and just walked in and said, hi, do you have any apartments available? <laughs> and uh, she showed us around, and she said, we actually have one. Oh no, there's actually two. We actually have two that just opened up today. They'll be available the day after Christmas. And I was like, what? But what about the wait list? And she kind of looked at me and she's like, I don't know what it is about you guys. You guys just feel so good. So I think we might have got bumped up on the wait list, right? I think, I think some magic might have happened because guess what? We got to sign a lease that day. How cool. Or we didn't sign the lease yet. We put the we put the money down, which you know what that means. And then we got approved that whole process. But it was like interesting. If I had just waited, I'd still be waiting. Still be waiting. When you take action like that, inspired action, magic does come through. Magic does happen. Things are unexplainable right? They really are. Even with this office, um, it was funny because um, we had an appointment and it was like way later down the road. And I was like, you know, I'm just going to call again. And I got someone else and they ended up meeting us that day. And then there was like a weird thing that happened because the two of them had different prices. And so even though I met with the one that had the higher price, I got, because I met with both of them, I saved us like $12,000. That's magic in my book. I'm like, what? Yes, right? You just have to take some inspired action. Are you talking about the here? Yeah. And that was so cool. It was so cool. Yes. yes, right? Awesome. I love when that stuff happens. That lit me up. I was like, right? Powerful. But I still pay rent. I still had to get approved. I still had to come see the office, right? There's still effort steps. But when you combine it, the magic really does just add to it and then it grows. And then what's really cool is things start to happen out of nowhere. Like that month, I got a random check from Bank of America for $1,500 for some lawsuit that I don't even know the name, like Gutierrez or something like that. I was like, I don't care. It was Wells Fargo. Oh, was it Wells Fargo? Mine. Wells Fargo. Okay. Came in the mail. I was like, what? And then two more checks came from Bank of America. 
And then like things kept happening. I'm like, see, this is real. However, I'm not expecting magic money to fall out of the sky when I start manifesting, right? Because if I'm sitting there waiting hoping. and hoping it with faith that it's just going to happen, I'm going to start to get really angry and resentful and I'm going to start to give up. When you are in motion, the cool thing about this is it feels good the whole journey. I didn't have to wait here to feel good. Periscope at the park felt amazing. It was like the first time I was connecting in this way. You guys see the Facebook lives. That's because I've had a lot of practice. Lots of practice. You know, I, I remember my first Periscope. I was so nervous. I'm like, what am I going to say? I popped on and I just like blabbered. I didn't even know what I was saying. It was just like words coming out. And I was like, stop the words. Oh my God, I'm live. And I'm looking at mom and she's behind the thing and she's like, cut it. Like, just, just stop. You know, and I'm like, okay, bye. I love you. <laughs> I cut it off. I'm like, oh, I didn't get back on there for like another couple weeks, right? And then the funny thing was, I just heard daily periscopes. And my last experience was this last one, right? And I'm like, okay. Let's just commit to daily. Also had me telling you every day too. Right. So when I started to do that, I broke through. It kept me consistent. And I didn't know at the time that it was training me for some really cool skills that I would need later. Right? I didn't realize. Sometimes we don't realize why we're doing something the way we are. But it really is shaping us. It really, really is. And I'd say there's no difference from my periscopes to my Facebook lives today, other than the backdrop. Because my energy's still there. I still say hearts, 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 even though I don't like, those are so cool and the hearts would come up, right? I'd be like, oh, the coffee color hearts, right? It was fun. But you are shifting and growing and up-leveling when you manifest. So expect some uncomfortable energy. But don't take it as a sign in the wrong direction. Take it as, she said you'd be here. Hi, I've been expecting you. Would you like me to take your coat? Do you need a cup of coffee? Might as well stay a while because I'm still gonna be moving. So get cozy until you decide to leave. This is what sets people apart. There isn't any more magic to me than there is to you. I always say this, like I am no one special. Right? I am just Kayla, right? I'm a human. I get frustrated in traffic. I get upset when my drink order is wrong at Starbucks. Like I'm just human, right? There's no magic to me. However, I believe in magic. And I work these steps and I work this process and magical things happen in my life. <laughs> Magic happens that I cannot explain, but if it wasn't me, it'd be someone else. Right? It's our willingness. It's our openness that allows the magic to come in. That's where, like, if I decided tomorrow, like, oh my gosh, I'm done channeling. That's okay. Someone else will channel on this earth. <laughs> Like, it's not like, oh, Kayla, she has to be the channel of this world. Like, pfft, no, get out of here. Like, it's just something cool that happens. And it's something that, like, yes, you're chosen for something, but you accept it. And at any point you don't want it, you just put it down. And this is where you have to follow what feels good always. Because how you feel is the best guidance you can receive. You have to trust yourself, right? Don't allow the resistance to be your guidance, but you are getting information that you cannot explain. So you have to start to trust yourself. The more I do this, the more I look back and go, ha! <laughs> like, yes! Yes, right? It's like, 
kind of healing the more you start to trust yourself and start to see evidence and proof that you're right. It's like, dang it, all those times, you know, you really do get some healing as you evolve, you know, like, yes. But I also want to leave you with some hope today because when you are in motion with the intention of manifesting, really cool shit happens, okay? The magic comes in. And it doesn't matter how special you are or however, or what courses you've taken or anything. It's your openness. Anyone can find this magic. As long as you don't expect it. Just like expectation is the thief of joy, it definitely is the thief of magic. Now, expectation is different than belief, right? Believing in something is a deep knowing, a knowing to be true. I'm not expecting an audience of a thousand people to show up when I, when I do something, but I have a deep knowing that one day that will happen. Oh, someone's mic on? Can you still hear me? Okay. Is it better? Okay, cool. All right. Sorry, I can't hear that part because my sound's off. Thank you for letting me know. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Uh, in manifesting, there's a really key point, too. You have to release perfection. <laughs> that is also the theme of magic, okay? You'll never, never be perfect. You will be, you know, on your bike, riding to Starbucks to upload some videos for a course you hope you can still teach in spite of the internet, right? Like, it's okay. But it's that openness that I'm talking about. This will help lift you through those blocks, those resistance. You will never experience no fear. And if you do experience that, you aren't asking for anything more than you have, right? Like it's just not something, like part of it is fear of the unknown. So when you ask for something you don't have, you're asking for the unknown. And when the unknown shows up, there's fear. That's what happens. That's why, just like at the beginning of this course, I said, I am not a teacher who will ever claim to be healed from fear because I am a manifesting teacher. <laughs> and I will always be up leveling and growing and evolving. But I am a teacher who takes action always in spite of fear. And I think sometimes that's where people get a little bit of the, oh, well, you're just really confident. See, I'm not a confident person. Like for you, this is easy. For you, this is, you know, whatever. Hello, I started at the same place. It was like, I don't know, do you think I can maybe ask for a raise at work? You know, like I started there. We all start somewhere and that's where we can't judge other people's journey because we're all over the map, right? We're like all over. So the other piece of information is <laughs> when you take action, don't compare. Because for somebody calling the bank to get a fee taken off, like a late charge on their account is huge, okay? A huge step. For somebody else, their step is gonna be walking into a Ferrari dealership. And it may not be as hard as this other step. We can't look and judge the exterior, but we really do have to feel inside. And that's where I was talking about stretching, right? We don't want to do the splits inverted. Okay. That is painful. Okay. Like that would, no, that's just not, okay. We want to stretch. And for some of us, like me, a V is a stretch. <laughs> okay. I'll be like, right, try and touch my toes. Like, that's a stretch for me. Like, when the, when the trainer goes, you know, you know, do the splits, you know, or, like, you need to push yourself. I'm like, I am pushing myself. It just doesn't look like it, 
okay? I'm feeling the burn, it hurts. Don't touch me, right? Okay? Some of us just like plop down and go, hmm, next, right? And like, right? So we cannot judge that. You are the gauge because only you can feel your muscles. Only you can feel that stretch. Someone else can go over and try to push you down and go stretch harder. That's just more judgment, right? That's all I hear. <laughs> but if you're stretching and you feel that burn and you're manifesting, you're exactly where you need to be. Who cares what step it is? Because when you show up daily with your steps, one day you look back and go, I can't believe I used to ride a bike to Starbucks. It's not like this big moment falls out of the sky into your lap and all of a sudden things happen. It's an evolution. And here's where the manifesting energy grows. And it grows with you. It really, really does. So if you want more magic, take more inspired action. And if you want to hear more inspired thoughts, you guys know what I'm going to say. Connect! Right? The connection. You have to connect to something. You have to connect your desire. Connect to people. You have to connect to source. God, goddess, whatever it is, whatever word you use, doesn't matter. Your connection, you gotta connect. Because we have to believe that it's not us doing it all. Because that's where we give up. We start to slide into the belief that how am I gonna do this? Hey, right? How am I, like, I wanna start a school. How am I gonna start a school? I don't even know where to start. I don't even know how you do that. Maybe you want to start a grant. How do you do that? I don't know. There's action steps, you know? But it could be overwhelming. Some of us get that and we're like, I just know I'm supposed to do that, but I don't even know what that is. It's okay. Trust the process. You don't have to figure it out all on your own. I like watching my classes there. up close and personal. <laughs> Mom is literally right here. <laughs> it's very very detailed. Hi. <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm going over. I'm staring at her over the computer. Like, I like watching my, my classes really live. I know I'm going over it. I get so excited. You know how I know I get excited? <laughs> you should. Hold on. Sorry, guys. This is going to be hilarious. I will later. See, I'm the comedy relief. Hold on. Everyone say cheese. You can't see you. Don't worry. It's just tiny screen. Oh, it's really bright. Hold on. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so funny. I couldn't not. Let me see if I can show you. It might be too, too dark. <laughs> I'll post it later. Kind of love mom, you know? So funny. Oh, man. To work here. <laughs> Gotta have a good personality, right? Gotta have a sense of humor. We love you guys. Anyways, I'm so... Serious. Huh? Can't all be serious. Can't all be serious. I'm the serious one around here. It's Layla. <laughs> so I want to encourage you because you don't have to do it alone. You will get that little, like... <sighs> but manifesting is kind of like the bird jumping out of the nest, right? You've never flown before. It's like... Right? I can imagine that's a very terrifying moment for a little baby bird, you know? Sometimes the parents have to push them out, you know? It's like, they're there and it's like, right? And like, they have to go. It's just a scary moment. But the wind picks you, right? You've got it. You have a natural instinct inside of you to know what to do. And that's the beautiful part about being sensitive. You've already done this. You have the ability to connect more than any human being. And this is why I believe, in spite of all of the energy and all these things that you feel hold you back and all these curses that you feel it is, all this stuff, I believe sensitives 
actually have the ability to become the, the greatest manifestors on the planet. And that is my belief because to manifest is to connect and who best to connect than one who can feel beyond any other being. All right. So here's where we start to believe in the magic of our soul because you actually can manifest greater than anyone when you let your doubt dissolve. The only thing that can pivot you from doubt is hope, okay? Hope is the only thing to turn around doubt. So let's have a hopeful thought in our pocket if we need. Like seriously, write down a little note, fold it up, keep it in your pocket. And when you have doubt, take it out and go, oh shit, okay. Right, hope. <laughs> I used to do this. I used to carry things in my pocket and you know what's really funny? In that moment when you need it, it's so helpful. I'll never way forget. Better than a way better than fortune cookie because those suck. I never get a good fortune on those things. <laughs> it's good thing I don't base my life on those. Um, it's so funny because I pulled out my coat and I actually had one of those. And it was like two years later, right? And I pull it out and I started crying because it was almost like I wrote a note to myself in the future and it was exactly what I needed in that moment. And here's the other piece of the magic. You will naturally be drawn to and guided to things that you need. But you have to trust yourself, right? If you hear like, take a left and home is right, <laughs> you're like, but that's, that's gonna add 10 minutes to my drive. Like, why would I go left, right? You have to open. But then you see five go license left. plates and your life is Yes, again. and then you see your deer sign or something, right? Something happens, you're like, the sunset, or I don't know, it's just something magical. You have to follow that. Follow the inspiration that you receive. Be inspired. If you wanna manifest more, feel more inspiration. If you can't find inspiration, search for it. Because the beautiful thing about sensitives is, Sometimes you don't actually have to know exactly what it is you're manifesting. Because when you feel good, you naturally connect to the feelings that you need. You naturally connect and start to vibrate exactly where you need and things start to happen. So get excited. Because here is where that curse of yours can show you what a freaking gift it is. Look at the little kitty! Kitty cats! <laughs> so cute. Oh my goodness. I'm a cat person now. <laughs> it's so funny. Anyways, I am blabbering now, but I just want you to believe in the magic of yourself. Because I think sometimes when we have lived a life of judgment and we've lived a life based off of you know, believing the blocks and resistance to be, I'm doing something wrong rather than I'm actually exactly on the right path. We start to, you know, believe that we don't know how to manifest or other people manifest. I struggle or <laughs> like whatever. Like a lot of us were probably really bad in school and we just didn't realize that, you know, we felt the entire classroom. You know, like there's just certain things where, you know, just unexplainable. So I'm telling you here, this class is where you are the star pupil, okay? You are teacher's pet. And rather than apples, you just bring coffee, right? <laughs> it's like, it's a grown-up version, you know? You bring, bring a cup of coffee and it's, it's perfect. So this week, action. I told you where to start. <gasps> Hi! Hi, sweetie! Oh my gosh, look at the little, little mini manifester. Hi, what do you want to be when you grow up? <laughs> so cute. I love when kids are out here. Oh man. Now what's your language? I know. I, got, I always like the wording of that one. Let me know if anyone has kids in the room because I can't edit myself. I just, when I get excited, I like to accentuate words, you know, because I just kind of express myself. But I can, I can contain myself when need, when need be. So just shoot me a note if that ever happens. <laughs>
Anyways, any questions? How are you guys feeling? How are we doing? Feeling good? Are we a little bit inspired? Do we feel a little bit of hope? A little bit? Yes. Okay, you got two thumbs up from Lise. Yes. And Lise's soul friend. <laughs> yes. Okay. This is good. I can't see all of you at the same time. I have to scroll. So I missed your thumbs up. Thank you. Okay. Yes, there's Lynn. I got two more thumbs up. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. All right, you guys. Well, I am going to leave it here. Let's go ahead and close down. Closing your eyes, deep inhale, breathing them up. Deep exhale, release. In this moment, call in a sign, set an intention for something that you wanna to see today. Calling it in. What do you need to hear today? Let it soak into your soul. Deep inhale, deep exhale, so you can open your eyes. Yay! Thank you, thank you, thank you for popping on. Hi! We have another little mini manifester. Hi, sweetie! Yay! <laughs> Lisa's like, she's done swearing. You can come back in the room now. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Oh my gosh. You gotta be able to laugh at yourself, you know. Um, thank you so much. So, um, mom, thank you for clearing everyone. Um, Claire just shot me a little message. Um, Claire here on the call. Um, who? Lynn. So Claire and Lynn on here um, work with mom and Catherine. Um, they they are her VIPs. They're they're training with her on like healing and, and clearing and stuff. They've been helping uh, heal and clear during this call. So thank you, thank you so much. Um, and if you guys have any questions or anything at all, feel free to reach out to me. I am back in the office, done moving, so I will be catching up on my emails. Right, gotta release perfection and. Um, I hope you guys have a beautiful day. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here and listen to me rant and you know all this stuff. I just really hope you leave feeling a little bit better than when you came. And uh, I just so appreciate you. So thank you so much for all of the coffees. Thank you so much for sharing everything. Thank you for showing up. It really does just mean so much to me. So I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Yay. Me and my black rainbow, love you so much. <laughs> All right, you guys. I'll see you later.